Okay, Jeff, uh, sorry to have interrupted you there. You were about to tell us about the HDR part of this equation. You're going to get a 4K TV, probably. in your. In, there's a 4K TV in your future, um, and 1080p looks better on it than it does on a 1080p TV, typically, because of the good quality of the upscaling. How does HDR, or high dynamic range, fit into this picture? Okay, H high dynamic range is has been in development for some time in this context, uh, and it's frequently touted as a uh, an add-on feature to Ultra HD. Uh, it's one of the things that makes it ultra. Um, the dynamic range, the how black is the blackest part of the scene and how bright is the whitest part. Brightest um, part, yeah. The specular highlights, the glint of sunlight off of a car bumper, something like this. Um, in high dynamic range, um, that range of detail is much more visible. Um, you're capturing it in the content as well as the TV set. Um, and this is a, a great deal, in fact, of what people were showing at the uh, in, in the uh, innovation zone. Ron already mentioned he was showing a, a camera that's capable of capturing this high dynamic range and made a fa fascinating demonstration, actually, to kind of raise my point. Uh, his camera gave an output in uh, in full HD in 1080p. It also makes 4K uh, output with the high dynamic range. And the displays that he showed it on in his booth, unfortunately, I think, Scott, you might have a picture of it, but you can't you can't tell because uh, the, the devices we use to take photographs of his booth had can't. standard dynamic range. <laughs> yeah. And when you look at yeah. them on your on your computer screen or your your broadcast, uh, you're still looking at it uh, in uh, with a standard dynamic range. But uh, up yeah, close, we have a picture live, of that called Grass, like Grass Valley Demo, I think, uh, Josh, if you can find that. There it is. Yeah, what what you would see if you were looking at this live, that lower uh, screen there is a standard dynamic range uh, screen, and the bulb looks just like all of the bulbs there do. It's a little hazy; you can't really see any any filaments in it, and so on. The upper two, and Ron can give you the details on them, but the upper two are both high dynamic range displays. One with a peak brightness of a thousand nits. Uh, the one on the left and the one on the right with 2,000 nits. Um, and in both of those, if you looked inside that uh, light bulb, you'd be able to see the individual filaments of the bulb. As, as Ron pointed out to a number of people um, as they came up, that's sort of the thing that catches your eye as you walk by uh, the display there. But what really gets your attention after that is looking at the base of the bulb and below it in the dark part of the picture. Um, in both of the high dynamic range displays, you can see um, detail, the, 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 the bolts holding the, the, uh, the base together and some different colors in the metals that are, that are down there in that dark area. Uh, and those in the standard dynamic range are pr pretty much just all a, a modeled dark area in the photo. Um, so the high dynamic range piece, and that photo was taken way more distance away from those displays than, than is relevant to the resolution. Um, the resolution happened to have been 2K. Uh, it could have been 4K, and the visual impact, even for the live person standing in front of it, would have been no different. Uh, and the difference in picture image quality uh, that you can see on even the large consumer displays, um, that's something you can see and point out from across the room. Uh, it's right. not just to sit close and do this. Uh, if you are in a typical American living room nine feet from your screen, uh, that high dynamic range is going to make an impact that you're going to appreciate and remember. Uh, the 4K difference is not going to be something that uh, you, you may feel good about it that you got four instead of two of those things that you bought at the store, but the, the, high, <laughs> dynamic, the high dynamic range is going to be the piece that, that actually delivers the value. And this is the point that I was trying to bring out the presentation that I gave. Um, as broadcasters now with the ATSC 3.0 uh, are gaining the ability to add more bits into the bit stream that is broadcast, they can use it for 4K. They can use it for higher frame rate. 
They can use it for higher dynamic range and, and actually a, a range of other interactive features and so on. The, the ATSC-3 is, is, is quite an upgrade in the <clears throat> broadcast infrastructure that's coming. Um, but as they weigh the relative value uh, to the delivery in the home, it, the impact of this high dynamic range is 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 really where I think a lot of them and and I was trying to reinforce this from the standpoint of the the main program at the Tech Retreat here that just because 4K HDR is being built into the TVs, that means that the upscaling from 2K HDR content is going to happen quite well. You'll get good resolution, but you'll get a new experience with the high dynamic range. Mm -hmm. And Ron, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the broadcasters are probably more interested in HD 1080p with high dynamic range than they are with 4K because they've already got the infrastructure in place for 1080p. Is it going to be much to add HDR to what they already use? No, not at all. It's, it's part of the signal flow. Mm. So it's really not... Uh uh, a, a great overhead for them to do. It's actually more the monitoring. So um, to, if I can get back to what Jeff described in the three monitors, mm -hmm. yes, uh, please. I, I, I used the light bulb and the filaments. Now that filament uh, was brighter than looking at the sun. So it was always white. But if you kind of, if you could stare at it for more than four or five seconds, mm -hmm. it was a bright yellow although it emitted a white light. And because the camera goes into what we call clips, which is the high end, the filament was white. So the SDR, the standard dynamic range, you saw the bulb as it is on the pictures there, it's just a one big white blob. Right. And the monitor up on the left at a, a thousand nits, uh, nits is a unit of measurement of luminance, how bright, bright it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at a thousand, oh, I can see the filaments and that's nice. Then you go over to the Dolby monitor on the right, which goes to 2000 nits. You saw more. More, more detail the in the filament itself. Ah, but as Jeff pointed out, when you looked at the base, when you go into the dark, I had several people look at that, then look at the thousand nits, then go over and look at the SDR and look at the SDR, and they said, why is that out of focus? <laughs> well, it's not out of focus. Ah. <clears throat> so the benefit of HDR, there's several great benefits to the consumer, and when these sets get, you know, calmed down to what they're, to what they're uh, displaying, is that if you have an envelope of a signal, if I get my graphic here straight, <laughs> it's about this big. Right. Okay. Then That's you, standard dynamic range? Right. Then you take high dynamic range that goes 15 stops above that. So that's quite a bit of light now coming in. Yeah. Well, H HDR handles the 15 stops over. So of one of the standards, the 2084, which is uh, they call PQ, the standard is written believe it or not, to 10,000 nits. That's like looking at the sun. Well, because not when, quite. Not quite. When, when the Cynthia, sun is a billion nits when you look yeah. directly at it. <laughs> but still. But, what, but when your eye first, cuts off, first, who cares? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So uh, you have all of this range, this big range. Now, what happens is when you have the high range, there's more light coming into the sensor, and some. Uh, if you have an iPhone, there's an HDR mode on it, and if you're shooting uh, outside in this uh, blue sky with white clouds, you take a regular photo. The white clouds are just a white blob. Mm. But if you turn on the HDR and take the photo, you see all of the texture in that cloud. That is where the the added uh, I, don't, I hate to use the word resolution, but the clarity well, of the, the details. The perception of detail. Right. So in the case of what Jeff was describing with the bulb, when you looked at the base of the bulb in the lamp itself and in the dark areas, it looked much sharper. Well, 
it actually is much sharper. But the sharpness depends on how much light you're displaying. The camera is putting out the same signal. But what is the display showing? So at 2,000 nits, it was really sharp and everybody loved that. You looked at the 1,000 and you go, eh, it kind of looks out of focus. And you look at the standard and it was like, that's way out of focus. Mm. Well, that standard uh, dynamic range is what you're getting today. So and, yeah, the progressing moving forward with the displays getting better and they're now handling the HDR of whatever standard, whether it's PQ, HLG, LMS, whatever standard it is, it's not so much that the clouds are now visible. What it is is the picture itself is perceptually sharper. It's clearer. You're seeing more detail. 